This is Pod Songs, and I interview inspiring people in service to others as inspiration for a new song. This is a very inspiring episode. We're going to talk about urine therapy, things you never thought about, things you, you still probably don't want to think about, but I think you're going to give it a try after hearing this guy. Let me introduce you to Kuhn van der Kroon. Good, but very busy all the time. With, uh, That's a good thing. All, yeah, it's a good thing, but uh, it's particularly also extra busy because of all the adaptations, the, the online sessions, hybrid classes, switching back and forth, a lot of extra communication with students. Wow, we have COVID some, life, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Every student is in a different situation. Okay. Some of them have underlying conditions, other ones are coming from abroad um, and are stuck at the moment. <laughs> uh, yeah, so every situ- situation is different. Some people are afraid, some people uh, think it's all nonsense. Yeah, so. No worries. Well, let's put all that aside. And, uh, yeah. ju- and uh, I'm so pleased to be ca- chat to you because my last guest was uh, she's a very nice lady but uh, she was an indian journalist mm-hmm. quite a famous quite a famous indian journalist maybe you've heard of her so, um, madhu trehan no i don't know no. she um so she's been going 50 years in journalism and um, but she hadn't written a book or anything or she hadn't got she, i didn't really have a subject to write a song for her about so it was quite difficult you know but with you i thought who can i speak to and i thought of coon van der kroon <laughs> and his book, The Golden Fountain. Yeah. And now that's going to be an easy... That song writes itself, no? Yeah, I, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that you, you wrote this book uh, 17 years ago, is that right? Uh, no, longer. I wrote it in 93, 92, 93. Mm. So that's more than 25 years ago. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Oh, so it's but it's a classic and it's um there's many other books i mean you just started a whole there's started a whole craze maybe you tell us a bit about how you how you came to write the book yeah how i came to write the book was a sort of an unplanned coincidence of uh, things um uh, i wasn't planning to write a book and uh, it was actually of course i had come into contact with the use of urine as a medicine Uh, at some point in my life during a spectacular first visit to India, where I ended up uh, actually on the fourth day of my visit there, I uh, started to do some work in an, in an ashram in the Himalayas, far away from um, uh, cities and villages. You had to, I had to walk the last 10 kilometers through a riverbed with porters to get there. So anyway, it was a beautiful place, um, but the unfortunate thing was, or whatever is unfortunate at such a moment, uh, is that during the first hour of karma yoga, which is basically working with stones there in the riverbed, um, some cart uh, pushed a rock off a wall and it fell from half a meter on my foot. And um, uh, I was wearing sandals and from my middle toe, the flesh was off till the bone and uh, blood was uh, shooting out. So I, I remember still that one Indian guy who was working there, he immediately pulled off his shirt, uh, tore it to pieces and wrapped it, uh, wrapped some bandage, part of that shirt as uh, around my foot. And I tried to walk back to the other side where the ashram was. And uh, on the way there, I was drinking a chai at a chai shop. And then suddenly I saw that around my sandal had formed a whole pool of blood. So mm-hmm. that was actually a very um, weird beginning of my stay in India. And uh, after a few days, typical Indian tropical situation, I had also on top of it a bad infection on the same toe. And it was in the meantime, it had become twice as big as normal and some parts were getting black. So uh, no hospital around, mm. uh, a lot of pain, and um, 
yeah, so a little bit of a crisis situation because people told me that if it would go on with my toe like that, it would probably have to be amputated in some kind of hospital that wasn't even nearby. Mm. But then I met this one woman um, from this, uh, actually, there's a, there used to be a famous New Age bookstore in Amsterdam called Himalaya Bookstore near the dam. And uh, she was also a visitor, the owner of the bookstore was also a visitor to that ashram. And she said, like, Kuhn, why don't you try um, to put a cloth soaked in your own urine around your toe? Uh, and she explained to me how she had had a bad foot inflammation a few years back, and it really helped her. So I thought, like, well, it can't get any worse anyway, so let's give it a try. Mm. And um, she also gave me a little book to read, which was from the ashram library, which was called The Water of Life by John W. Armstrong, which is a very old book. It's like from the 40s or 50s, written by a British guy. And um, that was all about drinking urine also. So I was pretty surprised. And while reading the book, I uh, prepared a bandage um, uh, soaked in my own urine for my toe. And I noticed after putting it on my um, toe, the pain subsided considerably within two, three hours. Hmm. So that was the first good effect. And uh, the woman told me that I should keep it soaked all the time, not take the cloth off. So I did. And after two, three days, I took it off to renew it. And then I saw that all the black parts had fallen off and that there was a beautiful new pink skin over almost that whole place where there was a big wound. So that was uh, great to see. Uh, so the external use at least seemed to have done something and I didn't need any surgery, any antibiotics or whatever. Um, but then of course I was also reading that book, The Water of Life, about drinking your own urine. I was like, huh? <laughs> what is this? You know, and I... I somehow remembered that I had uh, read somewhere years before about a, an Indian prime minister who was drinking his own urine, uh, who is actually um, uh, Moraji Desai. Many Indians, they know him because it was one of the uh, well-known prime ministers of India. And, uh, and in that time, Indians, when they wanted to refer to use of urine therapy, they called it Moraji Kola mm. because of uh, his tradition you, to drink it. I don't know if you get elected now with that slogan. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, you can get elected with the weirdest things at the moment. So <laughs> <laughs> It works for Trump. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah. Um, so... I didn't get, during my visit there, I stayed for two months in India and I kept on using it externally a little bit for my food. Uh, then I tried to drink it once, but I found it was really an, um, not a very nice taste also because um, I also had some tropical other fevers in that time and uh, it was very hot there and I was eating spicy food all the time. Mm -hmm. So... I kept um, the whole idea of drinking it for much later when I was back in Holland, because in the book it was recommended to do some kind of a urine fast for about a week or so with only drinking your, all your urine you pass out and maybe some water uh, and maybe some fruit or vegetables. But that, that was it. So I did that actually when I got back to Holland. And then I noticed that uh, if you eat only fruits and vegetables and at that time drink your urine, uh, it, it doesn't taste like anything bad at all. It's actually kind of pleasant. So, and in the meantime, I, of course, I had, was also psychologically more prepared because in the book I read that uh, urine is actually a very clean substance to begin with. Uh, I read also that amniotic fluid in which we all do float around for nine months is actually uh, more or less the urine the fetus is peeing out in the womb all the time and drinking it up again through the lungs in that sense because intestines are not working yet but it's sucking it up again 
uh, through the lungs and it actually that that urine like amniotic fluid it, it plays a big role in forming the lungs also from the inside they have done research into that so and they even have some reports about doing surgery on fetuses in the womb which is in some cases necessary then they found that actually babies are born without any scars and they also related that mm -hmm. to the fact that it is continuously floating in this kind of urine like substance so um, all these things were kind of intriguing me and um, and apart from trying it out for myself for some time well i noticed that i felt pretty okay with it i didn't have any diseases at that moment but i sort of um decided that from there from that urine fast which i did for a week I, I i decided okay let's just keep on drinking the morning urine as it was also suggested as a general thing to do and actually i ended up doing that for 10 years straight and uh, so s some people still think that drinking of urine must be uh, not only horrible but also very dangerous because they think it's toxic but the fact that i did that uh, uh, for 10 years straight every morning without having any negative side effects mm. um, shows that at least it's not dangerous. <laughs> Gosh. So. And so then you wrote the book and um, you've got many people writing to you know about success. and. Right. I, I wrote the first book and um, actually I wrote two books on it, but particularly after the first book, I got so many hundreds of letters from uh, all over the world from people who shared their experience with it and actually it, it turned out to be much more well known than i had thought also out of outside of india and i did some research into it and basically you find the tradition of using urine as a medicine either externally or internally everywhere around the world in europe in south america north america anywhere so so what kind of what kind of success stories have you had? Will you give some examples? Maybe? Uh, a lot of the stories had to do with uh, skin uh, problems, from okay. warts to uh, slight skin irritations, infections, um, and uh, itch also. And that particularly also, that is actually known also to modern, modern pharmacology, because if you go and look at uh, many uh, well-known skin creams, it contains uh, urea. And urea is that main component of urine from which urine also has its name. So um, that is well known that it is a it's a good skin moisturizer. It's a skin healer. The models, uh, use a, mo models have a right. Of... Yeah. So so there it is always um, successful, or in many cases. Um, Internally, it depends a little bit. Some people really use it to get rid of uh, a cold or a flu together with diet, of course, um, to some extent. Uh, but I've also seen um, people working with it in clinics in South America where the doctor was treating people with more serious diseases like TB, cancer, etc. And also there it had, uh, in combination with other methods, a, a very considerable effect and the, and the doctors who worked with it were very much in favor uh, for it and, and they also said that the use of urine therapy really strengthened the other therapies a lot I was because I, I know I was chatting to you I did some more research on it and I found that even pharmaceutical companies they like in India they had like 10,000 men's urinals and they were collecting it the urine and taking out the, the active substance and putting into their medicine and selling it for mega bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I think that um, that th these urinals that there are uh, in America, at least back then, 25 years ago, there was a company called Portageon who put those things at pop concerts and they were a daughter firm of a pharmaceutical company. Oh, gosh. So they, they had a nice business with uh, collecting <laughs> the urine of people going to pop concerts. But don't they do yeah. with some medicine they use like menopausal women's urine or pregnant women's urine or this different? Yeah, that, that is a specific uh, kind of thing. Like in, in Holland, there um, was always this um, um, initiative, Mothers for Mothers, and they used to collect urine from pregnant uh, women. 
uh, f for making medicines for other women to get more easily pregnant. So then wow. really they were focused on on filtering out some hormones that they found in urine of pregnant women. And those hormones were actually also useful again for women who had difficulties to get pregnant. Yeah. But these days everyone's on so much medication. I mean, do you think that that goes into the urine as well? Do you have to? Yeah, absolutely. So, so one of the things that you uh, should really take care of is uh, that if you do more intense form of urine therapy, you should uh, minimize the, the the use of allopathic medicine and rather not use them at all in that period. So whenever somebody is using medication, it's always good to uh, fine tune that with uh, uh, a good natural doctor to see if that re reducing of your own medication is actually allowed or good to do. Mm. There's other mm. ways to, to use uh, urine therapy in small quantities then you could uh, do it, which has also been uh, researched researched to some extent that is the use of taking a few drops of urine under the tongue then it oh, yeah. then it uses more like um, then it acts more like an isopathic medicine it oh. gives just a small impulse uh, to to the body about its own situation yeah it's like so a biofeedback uh, uh... yeah yeah it's like a, or a little self-vaccination or so you know whatever you and and there's also people who um who make homeopathic uh, dilutions from it. Yeah. Mm. Does doesn't your body tell you can tell if it's losing too much of this mag mineral, that mineral, and it knows not to some there's that biofeedback? Yeah, it's in a, it probably gives a, a, a sort of a holographic uh, uh, image, uh, but then uh, in the urine of, of the situation. Uh, of your body and and actually this is something that the body does inside all the time there's there's a lot of self loop mechanisms for the body to restore balance so this is just an a little bit artificial extra uh an external self loop that you create in that is case like, is it like is urine mostly blood plasma in the is that right? Yeah, yeah. In fact, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of water, of course, but with a filtration of blood plasm and a, and a full spectrum uh, of things in there and leftovers, which gives a you know, clear feedback to the body of this is what's going on. Actually, they I think they uh, they used a similar thing recently with the treatment of COVID. Um, the, the, I think something uh, which uh, they used for Trump also was called Re Regeneron. And basically also then they take blood plasm um, with a certain information in there to feed it back to people who are sick. So this looping of things and feeding a little bit of external information into a system can actually activate a system to rebalance certain things. It's just all about communication, even like cancer is they say is the body not communicating with itself well and yeah yeah okay so is there a time that you shouldn't do it? you shouldn't there's not that, that a med or a disease that med that it's not the urine therapy is not beneficial for yeah i think that um that there are several contraindications and the one we already discussed it's if people are on high medication mm. uh, also when there's a high um, heat condition in the body the urine can actually also be heating the system a lot so then you have to be a little bit careful in ayurveda that would be called pitta conditions mm -hmm. urine acts as a laxative so if people already have diarrhea then it might worsen that although i also know from own situations where i was in india and i got an infectious uh, diarrhea there that just going back onto just drinking urine and water for a day really helped to clear out uh, the infection so you drank it for 10 years, the first, the morning. Yes, yes. Yeah. But that's the strongest taste now, isn't that the, hmm? is, isn't that the strongest taste in the morning? It's the darkest. In the... Yeah, it, 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 it is. But uh, of course, in that time, I was also taking regularly um, a relatively clean diet. Were you a meat eating so, meat? Uh, sometimes, but okay, oh, but mostly not. I was mostly mm. uh, vegetarian in that period. Yeah. And and of course, if you do eat meat, you can immediately taste that. So that that's also an interesting aspect of uh, urine therapy. Oh, yeah. That that you it get gives the, you the last night's roast beef. 
Yeah, exactly. So uh, you also get more of a feeling what what uh, is the influence of certain things you eat or drink on your body because you'll t- taste your own body through your urine. So <laughs> well, as- asparagus is quite famous now for. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that absolutely is not a, not a very nice thing to have before you drink something. Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, so, and you're supposed to take the midstream. Is that what I read in another? Uh right right that's correct like um um i think that's just a practical thing uh, i i have checked that a little bit with people in india who are practicing this for a long time they said like beginning part of um the urine you should leave out because that is the part that cleanses out the um, the tube through which the urine goes out and uh, urine itself you have to realize is uh, usually totally sterile right uh, but some bacteria can come in from the outside so the first flow of urine flushes that out and in the last flow of urine there's sometimes some sediment and they they said that's also better to leave that out and what happens if you have like thrush or some sort of yeah you know, some sort of bacteria well th- then then Candy, okay. candida uh, whether it helps then or um, yeah should, should you drink it or can it... yeah you can you can but it it would still be good to uh to take the midstream then yeah mm. yep. okay yep. so do you still do it do you still drink every day or no no i did that for 10 years and then i thought like okay i i I'm, it's also not necessary to be dependent on it uh it was a nice experiment and now i every now and then use it uh when i think it's useful um, but not on a regular basis. But I do still use it externally quite a bit. I'm wearing contact lenses myself, and sometimes I'm uh, I have uh, because of that uh, an irritation on my eyes, etc. And um, uh, that the easiest thing to get rid of itch in my eye is just a drop of urine in there and just put it there, whoop, and it and it goes. <laughs> it it works better than any other commercial um, uh, thing for the eyes to reduce itch- itching. It's really a very good uh, thing to get rid of itch in your eye. And Other you thing any- I use it for is when I have blocked ears. Oh my God, wow. Yeah, I just take a, what's that called? A pipette, yeah, uh, a, a dropper, dropper. And, um, and with urine, put it in there. And it because urine has a little bit of a dissolving quality because of the salts in there. So if there's like too much earwax in the ear and it and it starts to block the ear, well, you can put oil in there. You can try to do it with water, but it's all kind of either uh, it takes a long time or or it is painful if you just do it with plain water, like if you go to the doctor with high pressure. But if you take a, a dropper with urine, it works perfect. You don't get you any pain. You have to do it regularly, and... or it just no. Then then I do it dropping in and out like with uh sort of pushing it in and, and and sucking it out again till my ear is clear and then no pain afterwards no uh, infection uh, but ears totally clean wow and if you have cuts as well obviously then you use it yeah 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 then it's also yeah they I've used got... uh, in, in in worse soldiers used to use it whenever nothing else was available they would use their own urine to to treat wounds yeah and what i've got quite bad dandruff with that does it help would it help a lot for that yeah it, it does work a little bit because of the moisturizing effect of it and also in some of the uh, moisturizing shampoos you'll find urea as an uh, important ingredient it's just oh, it's a, got, but there's so much salt in there as well you wouldn't thought it would moisturize yeah well salt is a little bit hydrophilic so it attracts also water to it okay. uh, and that also makes that if you put urine on the skin, it feels much softer because it has an unctuousness to it that water doesn't have. Uh, yeah, because water is drying. I know if, if you have a bath yeah, or you go yeah. swimming, you get wrinkly because water is drying. Yeah, I know that's, yeah, that's very yeah. strange. Yeah. So, um, so does it have to be the morning or can or any urine no, from, from any time? For external, for external use, definitely you can use any urine. Yeah. Okay. And of course, the funny thing is that with urine, you cannot say it is a fixed product because 
it is always customized to the uh, or or by the one who is producing it. So, so uh, it's, it's not a standard formula. <laughs> so drink your own, not other people's. Yeah, well, there there is a uh, uh, mention already in uh, uh, middle age books on, on natural medicine of also drinking um, uh, urine of children in um, puberty age uh, because they con that contains certain hormones that was supposed to be good for certain diseases in specific. So the there there is instances where drinking urine of other people is also mentioned. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, because yeah. in Ayurveda, like if you if you're lactating and you're not producing enough milk, you you drink milk. And if you're if you've lost blood, you can drink cow's blood or animal blood. Yeah. To and the cow urine is used a lot in Ayurveda, no? Absolutely. That 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 has. Um, um, it is basically it has some similar dissolving qualities uh, that your human urine also has, but it has it in a much more concentrated way because uh, uh, cows they eat um, uh, grass and that grass is being digested in the body by very strong enzymes. And that enzymes, those enzymes end up in the urine and they do kind of digestion of things. Ah. Yeah. And and there's so, also some bitter components in there because all that green grass and herbs that a cow eats create some kind of a bitter concoction in the urine. So it actually is kind of medicinal and it helps to break up blockages. Like Any armor? Heart... Do you have a lot of armor in the body? Yeah, armor, but even harder tissues. Like if people have like uh, growths in the body, oh. um, benign growths or whatever um, or heart tissues skin t uh, um, what's it called uh, cholesterol scar tissues uh, it can it can it can break that up yeah gosh so yeah they've been using it in ayurveda for for centuries no yeah 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 they still use uh cow's urine quite a bit in 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 medicines and and it's it is uh also there are Quite some research has been done on it, but, be, but because it is psychologically not so attractive to people, it's not mentioned too often, but it's a very, very um, um, effective medicine. And, and there you see again, like how we are psychologically pre-programmed to uh, find some things um, repulsive and other things not, because we do drink a lot of cow's milk. Nobody is thinking about it, but if you would put particularly in modern days, uh, a big farm cow's milk under a microscope, you would see a lot of pus in uh, cells in the milk. But mm -hmm. anyone drinks it all the time mm -hmm. because most cows continuously have other infections. Um, and um, uh, But because it's milk, nobody finds it really, you, you don't even think about it too much. The moment you mention urine, cow's urine instead of cow's milk everyone goes like Ugh, you know horrible but in fact urine is much more sterile product than milk so in that sense why is it much... sterile though why why because of the urethra the, uh... it, it comes to, it, it's a it's a it is straightly filtered out of the blood and uh, everything inside the body unless you have a very intrusive infection is pretty sterile the bad stuff goes into the solids. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so urine also because of its chemical composition keeps things completely clean. And it's also some people ask me like, um, yeah, but it comes out of the genitals. Uh, uh, so poo and pee is all dirty. And it's like, well, there's a there's a huge difference which what comes out of the rectum. Uh, which is really full with bacteria. And it doesn't go to a channel that has to produce new life. It's actually your anus and rectum is, is a part of your body that is only discarding um, um, material that has that is waste and also comes from a part of your body that was actually ex external to your body to begin with, the whole way down from mouth to anus is not in the body. It's just a pipe through the body. Say that again. So from the mouth to the anus, 
is not in the body tissues. Mm -hmm. It's still outside of the body. It's only a pipe that goes through the body. So it's in, but not in. Yeah, exactly. Whereas urine comes from what was really in. Because it was part of your blood. It was part of your tissues. It's left over from human tissues. Which feces are not. Oh, really? and, and so it comes out. Plus it leaves the body through a channel that both for men and for women is also used to create new life. Yeah. Now you, you, you figure... Do you think gold as being the representative of uh, um, cosmic intelligence would create one channel to, um, to use all the time for toxic waste and at the same time for new life? It would be a, a very mm. difficult setup. So, no, that urine comes through there, makes everything clean, is all the time healing that whole area. And that's exactly the area where also either semen or ovum um, is taking place or, or a baby comes out. That makes sense, yeah, because when you say the inside out, because you do have, you had to have the intestinal skin throughout all the, it is a barrier to yeah. all your, so the inside, yeah, it, there's an intestinal skin all the way through your intestines and your colon and your... Yeah. So it is yeah, it's like, funny one once you start thinking about the body in that way yeah. Like, oh, yeah that's interesting yeah because yeah you do you know you, you do there's a lot of ayurveda medicine that you you absorb through the skin and you know you, you even western medicine you put on a nicotine patch and it's absorbed through the skin and you get vitamin d through the skin and you you know you so yeah you would do absorb I had, with a, like a when i was in india i had the oil massages and you absorb <laughs> You absorb medicines through the skin, and yeah, they 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 pull out the toxins. They can pull it out through the bone from the bone as well. So yeah, it's it's this. We just we don't have this this impermeability. Yeah, yeah it's interesting, isn't it? It changes your perspective when you think of it like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely give it a go. I'm, it's just that met that barrier about drinking it is. It's it's is it better warm or uh, ice or cold? Yeah, I always took it warm, but uh, you can you Fresh can adjust tap, it to yeah. us. I, I know people who uh, who mix it into uh, orange juice or some fruit juice or herbal tea or whatever. And again, it I, I would suggest if you tr try it for the first time, the first few for for a few days before that, eat more uh, vegetables mm -hmm. um, and fruits. Uh, drink a lot of water. Um, don't go too heavy on meat or coffee, you know. So, and then you mm. just try. Maybe you just take a drop on your finger, dip, mm. and put it Gargle. in your mouth, and then then you then you go already like, oh, okay, it's not that bad. Because mm. it is a big thing. Isn't it? I mean, there are there are world conferences and the actual urine therapists and 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 many other books about it. It's not some underground science, is it? No, no, actually not. And um, I don't know how many people nowadays use it, but uh, indeed there have been uh, quite a lot of books being published on it. Um, but for some reason, it never really gets accepted in these times. I think the psychological barrier for most people is too big, which in itself makes it very interesting to both sides of the scope. I have people feeding back to me that uh, they were so thankful for trying out urine therapy because the moment they drank it, they had the feeling they took something in from themselves that they couldn't imagine before. And it literally increased their feeling of self-love and self-acceptance. Ah. It's a really interesting concept also. So like but then trauma, there's a, or, you know, could help hmm? with emotional trauma and things yeah, like that. Yeah, almost like that. Hmm. And it's maybe also you can see drinking some urine as a ritual of doing yeah breaking a taboo and breaking a taboo sometimes can have a healing effect mm. so that in itself can uh, can uh, can be seen with people who use urine therapy but i've also been in situations where i was on a party 
And people ask me like, so what are you doing? And at that time I had just published <laughs> a book and I said, I wrote a book on urine therapy. What is it? It's about the heating uh, uh, externally now, also internally by drinking. And I had people turning around, walking out of the room, slamming the door and not wanting to talk to me anymore. I you thought know? you'd be the, if I was having a dinner party, you'd be on top of my list, you know, because most people, are, <laughs> it's pretty boring, you know, but hey, yeah, Let's have coon round. <laughs> so, so it really touched some psychological button for them. And um, yeah, so there the taboo worked the other way around. Like for them, it was a taboo and they couldn't, they were suddenly confronted with it by me telling about that with a smile and they were boom, gone. But, but if their doctor gives them it in, you know, as part as an ingredient along with a lot of petrochemicals and they have to... They'd be ha quite happy to use it. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So yeah. what's some of the biggest success stories then you've had people tell you? What's like some some knockout ones? Well, mostly, as I also said earlier, with skin complaints, like some people with um, um, eczema or psoriasis whose complaints cleared up uh, quite a bit or completely by using this after they had tried all kind of... Uh, medicinal skin creams for years and also the fact that they often noticed that the itching decreased a lot so for people with itching on the skin which be, can be highly annoying can make you scratch yeah, I've got one here, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so that that oh yeah yeah, yeah. so that it evaporates they very quickly you know it's like do you, should you make a paste out of there so it stays longer the, you, you can do that yeah you, you can you can easily um um make a, a small pack, uh, a little piece of cloth and put that on there. And um, yeah, that brings me to another uh, subject of how you can use it externally. You can also, it has a little bit better effect, but it's less comfortable is if you really use old urine for that, a couple of days old, because um, then the urea in the urine will become ammonia. And ammonia is a very strong smell. That's actually the smell we remember of old piss, you know? Mm, mm, urine also. Yeah, uh... yeah so, so, that, so that's often what people also have in their brain when you talk about urine. Then they think about that, but it's actually the smell of old urine uh, and the ammonia in that. And ammonia is a very intense smell. But medicinally, it helps to open up the skin. It's a cleanser mm -hmm. and it opens up the skin. So then substances that are in the urine can enter through the skin more easily so it does have an effect but it's not so nice because it can stink okay so is that also better for the hair as well the old urine or um i guess so but i wouldn't uh, recommend it if you have a lot of social life because mm, the I hair don't. follicles do do take up some of that uh, ammonia so so uh, you can let it soak in for some time but then you if you want to go to a dinner party afterwards then i would yeah. advise you to wash your hairs uh, i think this is a this good. is a fantastic time with you know corona lockdowns <laughs> Absolutely. to get into yeah. this you know it's a it's a good time for retreats you, you can really take the time for it and uh, you also don't have any people you run into that can yeah. Uh, which you might find embarrassing. Uh, yeah. It's just my girlfriend, it's... but she's she's used to me by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you also said for like autoimmune diseases like uh, HIV and um, and AIDS. Yeah, there were, also the, yeah I, I can't say it really healed people there, but I do know it works generally as a cleanser and probably also as a little bit of an immune strengthening. Right. Uh, uh, to improve the overall health of the body and right, the body is right. dealing with yeah. a disease it needs yeah. Yeah. to operate on it yeah. at and I, I, I knew I knew quite some people from uh, South America who were at that time not having access to AIDS medication uh, and they were using urine therapy and they really said and also had the experience that they were benefiting from it together with a healthy diet and herbs etc so it was always in a package in that case and um so you can't really pinpoint it really down to the no. urine therapy only no, yeah no uh, no one's going to fund a research program into this so uh, it's always going to be anecdotal yeah and um, um the 
the situation now is that many people with HIV are using quite heavy medication. So then again, you would have to really look like if it fits into the total uh, program, etc. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it would be just used with people discern and and make their own decisions. But um, you could also in your book, you, I saw in your book, you can use it as an enema as well. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And because it's a, an, it's a slightly unctuous, um, salty uh, solution, slightly salty. So also there again, being brought in uh, through a, an enema, it does help uh, restore the intestinal wall of the colon. Uh, it cleanses also. It breaks up old feces there. Because again, urine has that breaking up uh, yeah, yeah. quality. Uh, in Ayurveda, they call that uh, a kshara function. Mm -hmm. Some sub substances can really break up um, sticky substances. Well, people don't realize how much undigested, how blocked their colons can be and how much right, right, how right. months old food and shit yep. sitting in there. Yeah. <laughs> no one's eating when they're listening to this podcast, but anyway, carry on. <laughs> Plus, often... Uh, a certain amount of people have little wounds in the intestines or slight right. inflammations. And the urea in urine has a, a skin healing effect also there again. So it can really help to to improve the whole intestinal wall my friend by has the healing a, capacity of urea. My friend has a, an ulcer in his intestines. Mm -hmm. Forget the technical name yeah. for it. Yeah, that, that would be an interesting case also. There are only because um, urine is, um, can be slightly increasing pitta conditions. You would have to take care that you combine the urine therapy um, with the use in the same time of more bitter cooling teas. And do it in the winter then? Uh, yeah, but particularly also the internal situation, the pitta should not be increased too okay, much. Because there's an ulcer ulcer so, ulcerative, ulcerative colitis. Yeah, yeah. So it can help for that, but then the overall package need to be good. So the food needs to be adjusted and some bitter cooling herbs need to be taken at the same time. So more vegetarian, because veg meat is quite heating yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And you can also use it for... Um, Sniffing, you can sniff the urine and you'll use a neti pot. Yeah, yeah, it's like a neti pot because that is often a slight salt uh, uh, solution yeah, which yeah. people use for neti. Your only urine is that naturally. Yeah. It has the right amount of unctuousness and salt in there to make it really into a pleasant neti substance. Yeah. So it could be good, also good for kidney stones, for breaking up kidney stones and things like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anything where it's and unblocking. People, yeah. And uh, they have stories, I, I don't know them from my own environment, but where people had a blockage, they couldn't urinate at all. And uh, when they got some urine of a relative or friend to drink, the kidney started to immediately work again. Really? Uh -huh. Yeah, I guess these things just hiding right under your, uh, not under your nose, but hiding a bit further down. And... Yeah. In, in, indeed, and it's, it's not a guarantee and not a miracle thing, but uh, you see, of course, in the animal world that animals, they don't have pharmacies to provide medication for them, so they must use natural loops all the time uh, for their healing, and generally they, they can uh, they deal with that. And uh, For example, if a dog has a wound, they start licking that. That's not just to keep the wound clean, but it also creates an, a self-loop system. So licking the wound provides information to the system to start healing more specifically that area from inside. Would they urinate on it as well? Or? That I don't know. That I don't know. But they, they, they would lick it. I, I know there's a couple of animals, for example, goats, who tend to drink their own urine by times. Gosh. They're very flexible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, it's fascinating, isn't it? I mean, it's it's uh, it is. it's food for thought. Yeah, and 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 again, I I always like to tell people that we have all 
to some extent done it for uh, all the months that we were in the womb. <laughs> uh, so it's not an entire, even if you would try it out uh, very carefully, it's still not an entirely new thing. No. no. Well, I'm convinced. I'm definitely going to give it a go. Way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And maybe also a nice way if people find themselves in a very strong psychological barrier about it, then just uh, take a drop of urine on your finger and put it on your skin, you know, and rub it in. Yeah. And smell it, etc. Just to to become friends with it. I don't mind that. I don't mind drinking. I don't mind putting it in my mouth no. or, you know, gargling with it. No. It's just that that first swallow would be... Yeah, yeah. That would be the one that would get yeah. me, you know. That, yeah. yeah. I guess, you know, you get past it and then... Um, yeah, it's free. Free healthcare. I mean, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So uh, I, I also think in this world we have to think about either situations or groups of people, uh, situations in which or groups people for whom um, expensive medicine is not available. And then this could be very well one of the things that uh, could be promoted, even if it was just in cases where something else is not available. But don't you think it's always like... The people who've tried everything else, you know, the, and the richest people who, you know, can afford the best medicine and they go for the alternative stuff. Whereas the people at the people who have no access to education, they just they take what the doctor gives them, you know, without question. Yeah, yeah. That, that, of, of course, that 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 happens a lot now. But I have really seen also in South America, a lot of people who had uh, not much money for for Western medication that were more than happy to use this because it's always available if you live in the forest mm. um, you have this always with you and available so just to know that uh, can really um, be a good uh, uh, tool to survive certain things or to feel better in certain situations and so it's 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 very useful if either there's nothing else available or if you don't have the financial means to uh, to do sure. something like um, that doctor that I talked about was treating people with cancer that uh, in Nicaragua uh, that had no money to go to a normal hospital. And still he was having quite some good effects with just plants, diet and urine therapy. Not in all cases, but in many cases he did have good results. Imagine how many people have had, you know, limbs amputated because of infections that went that went bad and they were just peeing the medicine that could cure them down the toilet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, well, I'm sold, you know, I'm going to I'm going to pluck up the courage. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to start with the hair because that's that's a Yeah, it's an easy thing to start with. Yeah. 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 Well, thanks, Kuhn. That's that was really educational and and, and yeah, your book welcome. people can buy on Amazon and on um where do you want, where's the best yeah, place? Yeah, I think the, there's, a, there's a, a recent, there, no, there's a recent reprint um, and that's available through Amazon. It's, it's very easy to buy it there. Okay, I tell, I ask people to buy my songs from my website because it's, I get 100% of the money. So is there a way, is there a better place for them to buy it? Do you sell it on your website or? No, I, I don't, I don't sell it. No, it's just only through bookstores and uh, online book oh. channels yeah and you're also doing um you're doing ayurveda teaching as well right correct so yeah. can people also study with you on that do you have spaces available yeah we do have spaces available it's been uh, quite popular in the last years we have uh, a professional training to become an ayurveda practitioner and it's located in amsterdam the school is called delight academy slash ayurveda and uh, the website for it is delightacademy.com. And that has a link to um, all the information about our school. Yeah, It's great. It's that you also have, um, you partner with uh, Ayurveda doctors in India who study the sutras and you, you study, the, you teach the, the real Ayurveda, don't you? The, the... Yeah, we really, we really um, base everything not on a popular version or only a wellness version of uh, Ayurveda, but uh, we really teach in our school uh, the foundation of Ayurveda going back to the classics, the Sanskrit books and text. And uh, But we do teach it in a way that it also becomes clear that 
anything that was written in the ancient text can be applied today. Mm. And in that sense, Ayurveda was really, uh, uh, or is really a science written by wise people uh, as a universal silent, uh, science that can um, um, still be applied or especially being applied today. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Vijay, you work with in India. I met, I've, been, I've met him, I've been over to India and he's helped many patients, you know, personally and he's he helps you with the teachings, doesn't he? The, the, taking the ancient Sanskrit suttas and explaining them clearly what they what it all means yes and i was recently uh, talking with him again and he um, yeah ashtanga Rilayam, the old books uh, he's often teaching from the old books and he and he explained last week again uh, how complete those books were it's often for our westerners it, it's sometimes a little bit difficult to um, understand that there was actually a time where some people were so complete, having such a complete overview uh, and insight into how life functions, that they could write a treatise that really uh, covers all the aspects of life and disease. Even if at first sight you cannot always read it, but if you really do research into this, these books, you see that they can be applied to any situation, any time in history, and any disease. Mm. Uh, re just quite recently, I had extensive uh, discussions also with Dr. Vijit about COVID-19 to see where it can be placed as a disease with its own pathology, um, how you can uh, help prevent it to some extent, uh, how at least you can lessen the symptoms, uh, and that all the, 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 the hints uh, and information to do that he got from the ancient books again very detailed sometimes but i think they're not allowed to say in india that they have a cure for any of this no no that that is that is as difficult there as it is here um, and at the same time you see that they use it all over the place mm. uh, just uh, two days ago i i heard an, uh, an, uh, a news item on the dutch radio uh, that said that uh, in India um, the the spreading is as big as in America almost of the virus. It's it's spreading very fast, but the mortality is way lower. <laughs> and they were they were tr trying to do some research into why this is the case. And uh, um, basically, in the radio program, they said because because uh, India is so dirty. <laughs> which I, I found a little bit exaggerated in that uh, interview. Um, but they said it is so dirty that most people have a way more active immune system mm. than here, which, um, which could be part of, well, of, the, of di uh, the, the diabetes answer. is ter off the scale in India as well. I mean, they're very... Uh... Yeah, yeah. So, so, um, and, and also there where diabetes in the more middle uh, class is... Um, high and obesity too that's where you see the mortality the highest in india but in rural communities it's not so high and there is mm -hmm. probably a combination of people having a better stimulated immune system but they also have a diet that is still using a lot of spices and herbs like turmeric mm -hmm. that keeps the system yeah. uh, clean it's anti-parasitical and antiviral uh, load in those meals is still quite big um and um yeah, I think that that whole combination of things helped them to to stay more on top of things. Plus, in India, many people started to use Ayurvedic preventive medicine uh, since COVID nineteen started to spread. My my, my doctor in uh, in Chennai, Doctor Shaji, he sent me a certificate. It got awarded as as being a frontline hero for um, supplying ah, yeah. his medicine. Uh, and uh, yeah, but they do eat terribly. I mean, they eat fried food, a lot of sweet things, sugary. But like you say, these things like turmeric you know with pepper clean you know yeah. these huge antibiotic yeah. like, properties so mm. yeah so i think it's a combination it's not one thing but it's clear that people uh, move through it easier than here in terms of mortality so that uh, there must be some reasons for that yeah of course well but yeah ayurveda is just has an incredible understanding and they have i mean the way they you know they had all these they had all the, the the diseases. They identified them, and then they had the 
the the prescription for curing it and how to do it in a sutra form in like a poem that everyone that the doctors yeah. remember so when the patient comes in they take their pulse feel or, or however they do it feel feel that what disease they identify the disease and then remember the sutra and prepare the medicine individually right. for that person it's just a level way beyond western medicine yeah yeah absolutely yeah all right fantastic well I could keep chatting to you all night, but uh, I think we got to wind it up there, and uh, I've got to because I've got to get to work on a song. Okay, good. The well, golden thank you fountain. Very much. Thank you. It's just gonna. How did you come up with the title? <laughs> well, that's a funny story to end up with. Like uh, I had a birthday around that time, and I was already uh, giving a few lectures on urine therapy. And friends of mine said to me, "Why don't you write a book?" And then um, as um, uh, as a birthday present to put some money in for me, they, they had reworked a dummy of a book and put a, uh, a one friend of mine is graphic designer and he made a, a cover of the book on his computer and it was uh, called The Golden Fountain by Kuhn van der Kroon with a, a, a yellow uh, fountain on there. And, and of course it was meant as a joke, uh, but the moment I saw it, that concrete in my hands, I thought like, that's it. That's a perfect title. And now I'm going to write the book. <laughs> so that's how it happens. Oh, well, I'm so glad you did. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thanks very much. Yeah. Lovely chatting to you, Kuhn. Take care. Bye-bye. Throughout the ages, men have fought against mortality. Sought the elixir of life for vitality. Famous alchemists have tried to formulate it Great adventurers have sailed to locate it Only to discover that the source that they saw Was very much closer to home Than they ever could have known The mythical golden fountain The elixir fountain of youth Bring out the beauty within A step from the golden fountain Watch your hair and your skin <laughs> Your whole body will glow yeah. Cleansing and moisturizing You have the secret Now you have to keep it Can't tell nobody Cause nobody will they call you names and whisper from the shadows Strangers are fun, you will ask you up to chat Choose your family name, you become a byword for shame They taunt you again and again That's the price of the golden fountain The elixir fountain of youth <laughs> Brings out the beauty within The golden fountain Wash your hair and your skin Your whole body will glow Cleansing and moisturizing Golden fountain, the elliptical fountain of you. Bring out the beauty within. But can you handle the truth? Take a sip from the golden fountain. Wash your hair and your skin.
for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to hear the song again, you can get it on Spotify, Deezer, iTunes, Apple Music, YouTube, anywhere. And if you stream 1,000 times, I can afford to buy a cup of coffee. If you really want to support the show, please go to podsongs.com and pay a dollar for it, or a euro, depending on where you are. Even if you don't want the download, send it to a friend as a gift. And if you could share the podcast as well, that would be great. Thanks to my musicians, Maurizio Sanicola and Massimino Vozza, and my researcher, Dori Verbo. And thanks to you, the listener. See you next time.